Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience, back in studio, episode 10, The Challenge, Total Madness, Fantasy Scoring, Recap, and it was a glorious episode, people, so it's going to be a glorious episode of this show, because if anyone tuned in last week, the audio, not so hot, so we had to come back in, make sure everything is good audio-wise, so when you turn it up, you can actually hear us talk. That would be a key stat, so this is what we're doing here. Remember to smash the like button for the episode, and in the comment section, leave your MVP for the episode is it burger king it might be burger king who knows maybe nelson's admiration for the burger king could be the mvp of the episode and also subscribe to the pat mayo experience audio podcast leave a five-star review and say something you enjoy about the show share it around do all that fun stuff paul shaughnessy is with me in studio i mean rogan's appreciation for burger king also top notch when he was when he's negotiating with wes saying you know I want to, you know, I really, really do enjoy Burger King. Um, yeah, I thought it was kind of funny in the moment. They're hanging for dear life off of this thing. He's just like, I'll, I'll drop if you, if you want to bring me along for some Burger King. So D and Rogan get a five thousand dollar gift certificate to Burger King each. Is it just? Is, is, I was presuming like it was just for like a year. Like you have like a year to spend five k. At Burger King. Could you spend 5K at Burger King? Would you want to spend 5K at Burger King? I mean... Would you spend them all on those hats? I wouldn't spend it all on the hats. I mean, you could. I don't know, like, if... Would you be limited per day how much you'd be allowed to purchase? Because, like, I would just do, like... I, see, I don't think so. I think like that $500 if you, ten times and buy it for a whole group of people. Potentially. I think it's, like... It's not uh, Burger King for a year. That's not what it was. It was $5,000 to Burger King. So mm-hmm. I assume you could spend all that $5,000. Like, I mean, the move is for Wes to be like, look, I got this $5,000 gift card. Go on eBay. Like, I'll sell it for two two grand. Yeah. I'm never eating a fucking Burger King. And sell it to Nelson. And Nelson's always. <laughs> Nelson's Nelson always. needs to win this season in order to be able to afford that, though, I think. Yeah, fair. So what do you think of the episode? I The episode itself wasn't very good. But the end, the last, like, 25 minutes were awesome. Yeah. From a fantasy perspective, like, there wasn't much going on. But, like, it was a fire episode. We got to see kind of what we wanted to see. I didn't even believe that we were going to see it. We talked about it last week. I don't know if that made the cut. Luckily, we have a TV screen that we can see right now just in case that ends up happening. There's not going to be any sort of issues. But I I didn't – I thought they were trying to tease me with that tease, and it was going to be some others sort of nonsense i didn't think that this was going to play out the way that it did but then when you see how it plays out it kind of makes sense we'll get to that of course well so the top fantasy scores of the week wes did come in on his way out the door comes in at number one 79 points bananas number two 62 rogan 54 d 40 josh 38 nani Corey 25 nelson 23 melissa and fessy both 21 not uh the highest scoring episode as you mentioned for anyone wasn't else. much drama. If you're Wes, do you throw yourself in? In that situation, yes. Why? And here's why. Why, why not wait for Swaggy or Josh? You've made an agreement with Johnny. You're supposed to be on the same team. Johnny's stepping on your toes. You have a history with Johnny that Johnny and you have always been enemies. You can't, if you have an agreement with Johnny, you can't let him walk all over you. He tried to steal Wes's win and... <laughs> Unless you are like, okay, I'm going to take a backseat to Johnny all the rest of the season. It was an alpha dog play. That's what Johnny did, and they had their discussion. Johnny knew what he was doing. If you're Wes, you, if you let him go, you literally just sacrificed your win to a guy who's been your enemy for like 15 seasons, whatever amount of seasons before. Like, I think he made the right decision. I respected the decision. It didn't play out, but... That's the way this game goes. I don't think he can just stand there and let Johnny just get a cupcake matchup and go off to the next round. Well, I don't think it would have been. It would have been Corey would have been his matchup. Yeah. Corey would have been like, all right at that. Because if you're Wes and you're looking at it, maybe you think you can just beat bananas at this. And like we've talked about throughout the course of the most of the season is that on the guy side, like it's pretty clear that Swagatha Christie and Josh are probably the two worst people at this point. Probably, left. Yeah. And like that's been that way for a while now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bear. Before, I mean, well, Bear Kyle, be- Kyle's in with those kyle's weird he's in that mix with those guys i I have a sneaky theory about kyle what's that that he wins the season what say what yeah 
That is a hot. Okay, let's hear it. That's that's hot. That's it, like il fuego. Like, well, you sound crazy. It, it could go one of two ways. I, just, I want to finish on the West thing first. So you okay. could face bananas in this, or like West has won half of the daily challenges. Like he's always in the tribunal. He just hasn't thrown himself in yet. Like you would get to see, like just throw Swaggy and throw Josh into like the, the whatever it is, the double the, yeah, deliberation, or hopefully one of those guys gets voted in. And you're just like, all right, I'll go against that guy in mm-hmm. this. That's a much easier path for me. Like, well, who's Josh beating? Honestly. Yeah. I understand. I understand all of that. I don't think it was like, in I terms think, of his survival, it was not a survival. I think, it, I think, I think it's, it's, you can't, no, you can't let Johnny walk all over you no, in that no. situation. It, I wouldn't have, I would, I, I respected his, his decision to, cause otherwise Johnny owns your, Johnny owns your shit for the rest of the season. Unless you just go and get your Red Skull and beat him in the final and you win a million dollars. That, yeah. that would turn out I mean, better for you. Throwing Corey in there was probably the move. Corey wanted to go in. Corey's a very good athlete. You know Johnny's a tough out on any given week. That leaves either Josh or Swaggy. For you. For for you. I, I get where you're coming from, for sure. So I think it's more of how we've always said that Bananas is basically a producer on the show. Wes is kind of the same way. I just think that he looked at it and was like, I got to do this for the show. Mm-hmm. Like, this is what the people want to see. I'm going to give it to him. When he turned, <laughs> when he turned to the camera, he's kind of talking to the camera. He's probably almost talking to the producers. Like, I'm never going to hear the end of it if I don't do it. I'm sure the producers are like, yeah, do it. Do it. They're like, we're going to we'll give you an extra 10K. Yeah, Wes, we'll give you it. another 10K. Like, if you, <laughs> if you win, great. You have an extra 10K and Johnny is gone. I don't know. So it would. I don't. I just feel like if, with their history, it's hard. It's hard. Did it's hard to just let Johnny walk to take that. Did you get choked up at the end when they were oh, when they were friends by the end of it? There wasn't no water dropped, but it was it was close. I got chills when like when it was like I reenacted me rewatching the episode this morning on tw- or, or not this morning, but yesterday morning, no, the morning that I watched it um, on Twitter and. And yeah, like I got chills. I'm like, holy shit, it's actually happening. It, it's, and then at the end, yeah, like I was just like, oh, can't we all, can't, why can't we be friends? It's funny, like the reason that this show has lasted so long, and you always wonder, like, why is Bananas still doing this? He's like 36 years old. Why is CT, why is Anissa still on the show? Like she debuted in 2001 on The Real World. It's been 20 years of Anissa. But you do get this emotional attachment to the people where, this stuff is like, oh, like this can pay itself off. It doesn't happen very often. Mm-hmm. But when it does, it's nice. I don't think you get that on any other reality show. Most reality shows, you don't have recurring. Exactly. That's yeah. what I'm saying. But like years, like decades of history at this point with some of these people, that it really does go a long way. Mm-hmm. Bananas, sneaky good at this type of elimination. Janky carnival game elimination, bananas is good at. Rock climbing. The only like weird like, that was pretty sim like it's similar idea to rock climbing and he had done like MMA training on his little like oh first look travel first look on his little travel show so that gives him an advantage over West too old West like like Yoked HGH West? West I wonder how he does against Johnny there it this reminded me a little bit of when Jordan faced Bananas on Free Agents, when Jordan called himself in but then couldn't punch through the thing. Mm -hmm. It was the same, like, idea of the elimination. So Bananas at least had a history of doing it in the first place. And it's one of those things where I think Corey would have taken out Bananas. Like, Wes isn't big anymore. Like, he's slender. Like, he doesn't have the punching power and, like, the size, like, the brute force to get through a lot of the stuff like Bananas would. Doesn't... Corey's got a dodgy knee, though, doesn't he? He does have a dodgy knee. But that's more like running. Yeah. I mean, it, it may not, yeah, it may not surface. That issue may not surface in the rock climbing. But in the final, it might. So, it may in a final, for sure. So back to my Kyle thing. It's Kyle or Corey, I think, is going to win. Just the cuts that they're getting. Because it seems I mean, like Kyle's been invisible. Feels like Corey's getting, like, the Co- hero cut. Well, see, the case, so this works one of two ways. Corey is getting a hero cut. Bananas is getting a hero cut. Mm-hmm. But was Bananas' hero cut for this? Not to actually win. Because yeah. objectively looking at this season, like with everyone who has a red skull right now, like bananas has to be a heavy favorite. You think so? Yes. By he is, I feel he is like by far the best person at the final. I f- for the final, yeah. But now but I mean the rest of the way through here. I worry I think that they should throw him in Fessy, a bunch. Fessy, Nelson, Corey right now, like those guys are the guys that seem to especially with West gone, like those guys are the guys that seem to have control of this game. Sure, but they're all idiots. So <laughs> they, that doesn't they help. are. They're not good at <laughs> like, ball. I, I don't but like I don't think no, like combined 
And oh, I here's mean, the thing: you I, don't think Johnny has a an alliance? His best friend Josh is still in the house, according to Josh. <laughs> yeah, true. I couldn't understand. <laughs> like, what that. are you talking about? <laughs> I, I didn't even know. Like, I didn't think you guys were enemies by any stretch of the didn't imagination. Didn't realize you were such great pals. I didn't think you were best friends. But yeah, no, I, those three, and maybe that was like some foreshadowing here's that the they, th- they showed the three of them together. I'm just saying, like, the hero cut the bananas has gotten all season would lead you to believe that he is going to win this season. Mm. But maybe this was the peak moment for him. Could I, be. Corey's got a really good cut to make him seem like a very sensible person, not an idiot like he normally looks like, be good at things, be nice to people. Almost the exact opposite cut that Nelson has got. But Kyle is getting the, like, under the radar, you haven't seen anything bad about Kyle so far. Like, it's all, like, fun and jokey. Everyone likes Kyle. I feel like it's when Cara Maria is not on a season, that's just what Kyle's yeah, but character you, but is. But you usually see more of him. And we haven't seen a ton because of Because he's usually feuding with Polly. No, but like in the seasons where it's like Cara Maria is not a factor, like you usually see more like sort of the stuff that like Bear was getting. Like Kyle's fun like that, that you would see just more of him having fun in the house. Has Kyle been on a season without Cara though? Until this one? I don't know if he has. Vendetta. No, no, because Cara won Vendettas. I can't remember. Hmm. Either way, it just it feels like he's also getting a really good cut. Yeah. And you've, we've slowly seen, it's almost like the Casey thing. Like Casey ended up going into that elimination, but it was like none, a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more in an elimination. You're the star of the episode. Kyle's going on the same route. Like he's, get, he's getting peppered into each episode a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And if he goes in to get his fucking red skull, he's going against Swaggy or Josh. He's probably going to win. Yeah. <laughs> um, but if ter- you're the house, you throw him bananas every time now. Yeah, that's what you got it. But they won't, but that's what they should be doing. And, uh, and what I was going to say about those other guys not being good at politics in this game, they're obviously, yeah, like, bit, like great athletes. Fessy, we don't really know all that much yet. Like, I don't know if he's an idiot. He just doesn't really talk, so it's tough to really He, know. he does look like a great athlete. Absolutely. He's a monster. Like, he's a big guy. Um, yeah, those guys don't have to necessarily be a, a great at politics because there's not many politicians left, especially if you get rid of Johnny. I'm trying to think of who, like Kyle and Johnny and like Swaggy's game just took a big left hand turn with Wes going home. Yeah, now the the worst thing that could happen on the season was, is if somehow he goes into elimination with Josh. The elimination no one cares about. <laughs> I kind of want to see it. Why? I feel like that may be. I mean, if if Bailey finds her way into a tribunal and she's been pretty solid, well, she has to get her red skull too. If she gets in there, she could end up in there. Against or if Josh somehow manages to win a challenge and yeah. ends well, up let's, in there, let's not count on that. Josh would call his own number for the clout of taking out his enemy Swaggy because he's done with Swaggy. Never gonna be we friends were, with Swaggy ever again. We were best friends, big brother friends, and then nothing now. Johnny's my best friend now. It, it no one has more best friends ever than Josh. Best mm-hmm. friends with everyone. Yeah, I know. He's just a passionate guy, though. Sometimes he's in. Like, I mean, uh, last episode he was just a complete donkey, but he was drunk. How much do you win if you win Big Brother? Uh, Isn't I it think like it's a, a million? So he won Big Brother, and then he was talking about. Like, That's why he's bragging about yeah, his I bank know, account. But, yeah, but he, on to, like when he phoned his family, which was like I, they have like five dogs apparently. Mm-hmm. And he that was just really bizarre. I was like, I can't handle one dog in my house. Yeah, let alone having five in a house full of people. I'd drive me nuts. But he was like, I need to take care of my family going forward like you won a million dollars like what are you talking about you need to win another million how many millions do you need josh he goes on this show and he doesn't win anything though yeah, but he gets paid to be on the show and unless you think how much do you get paid an episode three four thousand okay so, so right for- episode 10 what you get what do you think he gets like 50k for a season i mean he probably gets uh, maybe he does maybe he i have does. no I, idea i would say it's probably somewhere between 25 and 60k mm-hmm like, Bananas and Wes get six figures just to appear on the show. And then whatever else they win, they win. I think Kyle gets a bunch, too. Kyle has a big, like, international following. Like Bear does. A bunch of the British. Yeah, there's a... The British uh, reality TV world is very, very well developed. They really are. How yeah. did that happen? I don't know. They've just always been... They've kind of been ahead of the curve. They've, they've been ahead of the curve on a lot of stuff like that. Like, The Office... Yeah, but the office... Like, the British office... But the British office is so much different than the American office... Well, the first season is pretty pretty much the yeah, same. Yeah, and everyone hated the first season of The American Office. Fair. But you know what I mean in the sense that, like, in terms of, like, raw, gritty type of television programming, they, they've always kind of had an appetite for that, I well, guess. I don't know. I, I would say that when you see people on British television shows, they look like real people. Mm-hmm. And when you see 
people on American TV shows, they, they're just handsome. Good, yeah. good looking people on American TV. On British TV, not always the case. Because I think for British TV, they probably cast more on personality than the looks. You know, or acting. Yeah. In like the theater background mm-hmm. in England is just so much higher. Fair. Good point. So you get just thespians wherever you turn. Thespians even, to the right of Even me. if it's on Coronation Thespian. Street. Yeah. Uh, but also like the, the, I mean, they don't call them seasons. They call them series in Britain, but doing like the six episode series, like series one has six episodes. Series two has six episodes where in the U S it was like, it's 26 episodes a season. Now all the shows are like, yeah, eight, do eight episodes. That's our season. That was Mm -hmm. also the British model. Yeah. Maybe they're very advanced in terms of how TV should actually be. Cause that's turns out what it is now. But yeah, Kyle, I think is going to do well. Nelson, they got, they got to get rid of Nelson. Nelson's good at finals. He is. That's why I drafted him. I keep, anytime I make these boards now, though, for our show, I keep looking at that Corey 160, especially today. I, I, saw, I have Corey. I saw he's 160 and Nani is 160. I'm like, how did you not play Corey, you idiot? I played Corey. No, that's what I'm saying about myself. Like, how did I not play him? I still that have. That was dumb. Because Johnny beat West, I still have all six of my people, and somehow I'm not in the top half of the fantasy scoring. Yeah. Bad news for me. At least Melissa made the top 10 this week. She's. I don't even know what she did. I think it's because she was like crying when she was on that uh, whatever. She had her baby. Shout out to Melissa. Shout out to Melissa. Congratulations. We talk trivia. Oh, can we talk about, because we were talking about cuts earlier on. And before I forget about it, I want to talk, because I've talked about this on previous episodes, that Nani, the Holy Trinity in general, were getting like the idiot cut, right? Mm -hmm. Happened again today, or uh, in this episode, with uh, Nani. Who did they cut to? Just before commercial break. Oh, there's no way. Wes and the Bananas have been working in cahoots all season long. There is no way that that Wes would put himself in against, uh, against, against Bananas. That wouldn't make any sense. Go to commercial, come back, sends himself in. Every single time. Just watch for it. It was happening with Jenna and it was happening with Kayla too. Anytime what they, they're basically the Tim Anderson. Yeah, whatever they say, the opposite the happens. The opposite happens of whatever they say on the program. Oh, I want to talk about my MVP for the episode. And that was... I think it's going to be Nelson's enthusiasm for Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like, no, no one is that fire. Like, of course the producers go up to them and are just like, be excited are about Burger King. Start, start, like, maybe he just, he just may, wants to get on the brand. May, he hopes that they'll reach out to he, him. He and wants like, to be like John Jones, get it on I the mean, shorts. <laughs> if Burger King wants him to do some like social media posts, I'm sure he could, he'd be right on board. Maybe I'm way off base with this, but... How is Burger King still in business? It was the last time anyone went to a oh, fucking Burger King. I haven't been to there's, one. There's since one right COVID. by your house. There haven't been since COVID started, but that's because the drive thru is only open. But even so, how often were you going to the Burger King that is literally two minutes from your house? Maybe a couple times a year. Yeah. Now, I mean, and, and the is, only, is there a McDonald's near your place? Too? Yes. So how, this how is, often did you go there? It, see, they used to be like basically right across the street. And. And yeah, the, usually what would end up happening is that people would go to Burger King because McDonald's lineup was too, too long. Busy. Or it was like, geez, you couldn't get a seat or something. And the Burger King, usually pretty empty. There's also like a Quiznos. I'm basically locating myself to anybody who knows where Toronto, anybody in Toronto. Now, now you've said the city, so I you're going to go. Quiznos. How does Quiznos stay in business? I'm sorry. That doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, I'm, I walk by. I'm, I'm really out on the toasted sub, but I'm not I, even out on I, their sub. I, I think their say, food's fine. But, but I think, like, I mean, a bunch of subways ended up like closing down. I th- spends money there. I just feel like the overhead on a sub shop is so much lower than it is on like an actual fast food place. Like, just think about all the equipment that's in the back of a Burger King or McDonald's or Wendy's awesome. ver- versus a Quiznos or a Monsieur Sub, which I'm big on, this, or Subway. This Quiznos is right across the street from a Subway. No, not great. Uh, dude, I it has to be like a money laundering place. A hundred percent. So like, it's so it's just dude, like I, dude. I think in every coin operated in, laundry place in the world also a money laundering place. We're getting close to like a decade that I've lived there. Uh, not quite, but getting pretty close. And I honestly have never seen more than one customer in there. Maybe they own the building. You, I would hope so at this point. If they do, then they could probably turn a pretty decent profit if you're not paying the lease every single month. Fair. Just paying Maybe the it's just been in the family forever, and they're just like, yeah, it's Quiznos now. We don't really want to apply for like different licensing yeah, fees. We'll or keep it until like something that. better comes along. Whatever. But it, I'm not even going to say Burger King is bad. It's more just nothing. Like, 
I'm not against Burger King, but like if it's uh, just, it's if just, I was in a situation like you where there was like six fast food places, I'll like they have Burger Kings in airports. Like that can we do a fucking Burger King? I don't mind a Whopper. Their poutine is like okay for like greasy fast food poutine. Poutine doesn't seem like a thing I'd want to get. Like, I don't like. Poutine I mean, it's anyway, not anyway. No, but like, like fast food poutine fast food is like poutine really seems low. awful. It's really low. Like you're not enjoying the poutine. There are poutineries around. Just tastier than just the fries. If you're if you're wanting to if you want to get down like that, you know sometimes you just want to get I down like that. I, I don't want to get down like sometimes that. I'd probably just, just get down. I, I'd probably just have the fries. Yeah. Um. Anyway, a lot of Burger King. Yeah, here. Burger King. Yeah, honestly, yeah. Nobody ever asked to go to Burger King. It seems like Nelson would, though. And, man, Burger King, go get get Nelson some get get Nelson some money. I think it's smart. He seemed like he would be a passionate uh, ambassador for the brand. I rewatched, so my son was born 17 days ago now. So I've just been at home the mm-hmm. entire time. So we have a 16-month-old and a newborn. So my wife is on newborn duty, and I'm on, like, playing defense against the crazy 16 month old who mm-hmm. just runs around all day and has way too much trying energy. to keep him from driving mom crazy yeah so at nighttime i get like three or four hours and i got like it's not that i have nothing to do it's just i'm so fried by the entire day i'm gonna throw on something i've already seen just watch this and just kind of sit back mm-hmm. so i watched the gauntlet three and the duel two nice um one big thing on gauntlet three that's the season where big easy like has a heart attack in the final and they lose automatically because of it Frank and Jillian are on that season. They couple up in the first episode. And he wins three eliminations, and she wins three eliminations to get to the final, and they end up winning. A lot like Jordan and Tori from last year Mm -hmm. is the one thing I found. And then Duel 2, I missed the prizes. Like, that's what I liked about the Burger King thing this week. Like, not only do you win and you get into Tribunal, you get a bonus for winning. Like, I don't understand They should really bring that. And it's it's, it's such a good timestamp of some of these shows, like, what they offer. In terms of prizes, like TJ's like, yeah, you win the elimination today. You also get this MP3 player. It's no, like, I remember. Oh, sick. That used to be like every single, there was some sort of, yeah, MP3 player. It was like a Discman. Like if you go way back, it's like yeah. it's a Discman that you're getting. It's Ex- like a Sony like sports Discman. Remember the yellow ones with like the little Oh, clips? yeah. Well, there was one on Dual One. They gave away a BMW motorcycle. That's, Brad won it. It was like badass. And Svetlana won the other one. But then the rest of the prizes were like, here is this global radio player. Like, oh, I wonder why this. Thanks. I wonder why they stopped doing that. I don't know. It could be that the the offers just stopped coming. I highly doubt that, considering it's the highest rated show on cable right now. I know. Yeah, that, ter- for the key demo, but they wouldn't have eight, known that it was going to be the highest. It, it was second last year. Like, was it? Okay. Yeah, and Burger, I know, I know Burger King's given out 10k in gift certificates, and we've talked about Burger King now for like I seven mean, minutes. It seems like an easy money making opportunity. Just every single challenge is sponsored by this. You get a prize afterwards. Then you get to have these people that you know the viewers and fans of the show have become fans, and like you know they're kind of influencers to a degree. I mean, I didn't watch them eating Burger King and be like, I need Burger King right now. But, but wife, you know what I mean. It's my like wife if, did. She ordered Burger King as we were watching the episode. <laughs> she likes Burger King, though. She likes anything she sees on TV food-wise. Okay. Like, if a Taco Bell commercial comes on, it's like, I need to order Taco Bell. Like, been, I, never were, I never quite understood who advertising actually worked on. Turns out it's my wife. Yeah, because I've we've been here, you know, late night working some shows and stuff, and you've never been, you've been on the phone with the wife, and you've been like, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll grab you some Burger King on the way home. Like that's happened. Taco more, Bell. It's usually Taco Bell. I, I know, but that's happened. I remember Burger King has definitely happened more than once as well. And I know how you feel about Burger King, so it must pain you. Do you even buy anything when you go in? No, like nothing. Even when I go get Taco Bell for, it, I don't get anything. Oh, why Taco Bell? How could you not? I try not to eat fast food. Oh, you're you're a saint. I haven't had Taco Bell in a while. I'm missing I, it. I have started to order charcuterie for dinner <laughs> from a place by... I've been trying to not... So when we had the baby, I had gained like 10 to 15 pounds since the beginning of like COVID lockdown. I was like, I'm going to get this all worked out. Like I'm going to start working out again. I'm going to be out with the baby every day, take him for like a five mile walk or something. So I basically shed all the weight back, which is fantastic. And a lot of it has to do with dieting. And just, I was eating so much bread. Yeah. So much bread. And like firing mm-hmm. up some like putting on some tater tots at home and putting them on stuff I wouldn't normally do. I'm getting a little bit back in track here, but it was getting it was getting bad. Luckily, we're doing like the show like all virtually, so nobody had to see me. But like, we were getting we were getting real beefy at one point. Um, 
I think it had a lot to do of like feeling sorry for myself for like COVID and like sadness eating. There was a lot of macaroni and cheese being consumed. Well, I think it's just you get you get stuck at home all the time. Yeah. Like I can't go anywhere. Yeah. Now I feel bad about that. I'm gonna throw on and because you have and all, just and you have to all eat. of the time in the world to make whatever you want, and you make the quickest, like worst thing for you. I'm, I kept doing it. Yeah. So now I just drink coffee all day instead of and smoke cigarettes. <laughs> smoke cigarettes. <laughs> that suppresses my hunger. That's that's, that's why. How, that's how you look like this, people. <laughs> um. What else do we talk? Trivia. About on this show? You gotta talk about trivia. Yeah. I didn't like the trivia. Why? That that was the one thing I wanted to tie back into Duel 2. That was the very first trivia challenge was on that season. But it was a spelling bee. So they started out with like third grade words, fourth grade words, worked their way up. That's when Brad couldn't spell throne, which was pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. Uh, didn't realize there was an E at the end. And I believe he's a teacher. So Thrawn. Thrawn. Just, just a great Thrawn. Because it was funny because that was the name of the challenge this week. It was throne something like thrown down or whatever it was. I thought it was a nice homage to Duel 2. If that's what they were going for, I don't Could know. Could be. Especially if they had left the E off of it, that would just would have been fantastic. But these aren't like, these are trivia questions, but they have nothing to do with how smart you are. No. I don't like that. It's really stupid. Like They're really easy questions. Some of them were, or some of them were like so hyper-specific that you just would have no idea. Like, who like what that was which country has the biggest population china india sure. or the united states of america but there was another one of like what continent had the highest like average temperature it's like that's that, there's a big discrepancy between the difficulty of those questions cuz one like i'd people, say africa i believe the answer was north america really whatever the oh qu- discrepancy Whatever, whatever. No, I'm saying the right, discre- we're, we're getting we're getting tracked. Too no, I'm, much sa- I, I'm saying that the questions like there was no balance to the questions. Mm-hmm. They were either incredibly easy or so hyper specific that no one would ever actually know it. Like spelling bee is good. Make it a spelling bee, mm-hmm. or make it all geography or all something. Like going all over the place just seems stupid. I, I'm looking for that. That makes me think about this. What's Jenny doing? Jenny. Jenny with D. Oh, she's waiting. She's going to have to attack. You think she's going to attack next week? Maybe. And like how? There, I think there are two. I, I'm really curious to see how many episodes are left and how many eliminations are left. Like the, they all seem like they're pretty concerned about the number of... of red, red Skulls available. Yeah. I don't think that's going to end up being a thing. Like They might do a double elimination again and give two more people the ability to get red skulls. It's going to get boiled down to a point where the only people left in the house are people with red skulls. And then people are going to have to start going at each other. And it'll probably be like five guys, five girls. How many guys and girls are left now? I think it's like seven and seven. So it's, we're getting close. Sure. But the final is only going to be, but there's usually like a step in the final where one person gets eliminated (laughs) after like stage one type. of. I'm guessing there's probably eight people who go to the final and two get cut right away. And then Mm -hmm. it's three, three guys, three girls, and they'll go run the final. But there's still too many people who need the Red Skulls right now to have more Red Skull people be thrown in all the time. Yep. So until that happens, then we'll get Nelson versus Bananas or whoever wins versus whoever wins. But until then, I and, or Jenny versus D. But like Nani needs to go in. Melissa needs to go in. Yep. Bailey needs to go in. I think so. Bailey's had lots of opportunities. So is Swaggy, to be perfectly honest. They just never called their own number. Like, they won a bunch of challenges this season. Yeah. If there's prizes, they would have racked up a bunch of prizes. The biggest, and it didn't matter, was D. D not going after, what was that, the girl? Hello, Earthlings girl. Oh, Jen. Jen. And giving her to Jenny. Yeah, giving her to Jenny. And then now backtracking on it. She's like, well, you already, you made your bed when you did that. Like, that was, that was, that was the easiest tap my own shoulder, walk down there, get my red skull, walk back, game over. And then you don't have any of this drama with Jenny. Jenny probably has to earn it, like, in a much, she probably has to take on Tori or something. Like, actually, like, have to put in an effort to get that skull. Well, if you're the girls in the house right now, like, you want to find a way to get Jenny versus D because they're the two best yeah, girls absolutely. that are there yeah so get rid of one of them it's like i would love to see jenny win her to get d like voted in because d's lost west now so that's her you know main thing and then call her down in a limit i'd like that i'd like that a lot let's go we're not getting a whole lot of rogan we got a little bit because he got called into the tribunal but just 
not a whole lot of Rogan in general. No. Could he win this season? He's just he's just he's, pretty, chill, he's just chilling he's, with his skull right now. He's, he's pretty he's good. Very live to win right now. I and this is a guy who you know he struggled on his first season. wasn't even able to get into the house. Went focused on his strength and conditioning. Came back. We're all like, all right, bro, you tapped out on like you know the first episode last time we saw. I didn't even remember him to be perfectly honest. And then came back and obviously once CT kind of wrapped his arm around Rogan, I'm like, okay, all right, Rogan's my guy. So. If it's me, on the girl's side, you try to get Jenny versus D. You have to get that and get rid of one of them. Bananas, you want to get rid of because you know he's good at finals, but the more easy route is to get Fessy versus Nelson or Fessy versus Rogan. Because mm-hmm. there are two big bodies who could challenge Fessy. Yeah. Like, if you're scared. You throw it, Johnny in. And Johnny's probably going to lose to Fessy. Johnny versus Rogan. Johnny versus Rogan is interesting. It, de- you- it depends on what it would be. Like, if it was pure physicality rogan just i mean him. you just vote johnny in every week if you're the they, guy they won't though that's they what won't they do should. it it's so easy get rid of them like if you I, know, I want him to stick around i have him on my fantasy team west going home that was the other expensive chalk oh you had both no i just had oh yeah i jo- just had johnny johnny's the only expensive player left yeah west ct jordan all gone yeah so any of those builds are all dead now. So after losing, I mean, I'm not going to win the whole thing, of course, but like I'm going to be a little bit more respectable now that Wes is gone, I guess. I've totally forgot about Casey. Casey's the other really good girl yeah. to throw in. Yeah. I so think try, try to get two of those. He's th- also worried about that one now. Yeah, too. But just, just try to get two one. of those three in against each other. Yeah. But instead it'll be like Nani versus, I don't know, Bailey. I mean, Bailey should try to maneuver so she can go up against nani that's, would you is, would that's you want, the easiest match would you left, want to right or uh, melissa, melissa maybe maybe melissa one of the two i don't know like I, well, I don't know how good bailey is i don't know how good melissa is and nani's not good bailey could be all right she could be melissa it, that one elimination I mean, she was in she was ferocious and casey's a wide receiver yeah she right. plays like professional women's football all right that would have been good to know rob mentioned that on the show I mean, yeah, you tune Rob out. I, guess. <laughs> I do <laughs> no, too. Not at the every time. episode, but there's so much information. And like, I'm trying to sometimes with Rob, I'm just not trying. I'm trying not to listen because I'm worried about spoilers and I want to enjoy the episode. Not that he looks at spoilers, but, but he like, does. He's so good every single season. Yeah, you start somehow to think he knows exactly that who's going. Maybe he is, but I think he had Wes on his team. So bad news. Oh. Down goes the king. Wow, Rob. I think. I mean, on one of his like 37 teams. Yeah, he'll just like, change the name of one of his burner teams <laughs> to his team. He's like, no, no, this is my team all along. Uh, we like Rob. Thank Thanks, you Rob. for all your work, Rob. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, Rob did the scoring for this episode. Thanks, Rob. Yeah. Uh, listen to the Challenge Chronicles as well. They also do a recap show, but I believe they're actually coming up on Gauntlet. Three. Vote in the Custies. I think those are closed. Are those closed? I believe so. Well, I guess we can start doing graphics for that. When are we going to do that? Soon. Yeah, I guess so. I, yeah. I, time flies, man. Custies. March took eight months to finish, but since March passed, it's been like, whoosh, mm-hmm. just flying by. Yes, sir. It'll be July before we know it. <laughs> Yeah, that's all I got. That's all I got, really, too. UFC this week? Is the mm-hmm. dog is the dog going to win again in the, in the main event? Because Amanda Nunez seems like a, like a legit fighter in a main event for once. Yeah, this is like, this is the, the it stops here. The trend, I think it's been like five or six. And if you, even if you go back to John Jones, and lots of people thought that he lost that fight. Well, I would say, the, the, remember when UFC was canceled, we did Cage Warriors? That, yeah, that, that, that underdog guy won, too, in the main event. Yeah, Bartos Fabinski, we were on him, too. No, I, I think man, she's the double champ. She's the she's the champ champ. She's got she's the goat. She's the lady goat. She's the she, best. She have both belts. She has both belts. One hundred forty five, one hundred fifty, one hundred thirty five, and one hundred forty five. So this one is for the one hundred forty five pound division. Not really a division. There's like four or five <laughs> women in the division, but Amanda Nunez is far and away the best woman on earth. I don't. I would be legit shocked. This would be like a, I don't know, home beats Rousey, uh, GSP versus Sarah type of upset. I'd be pretty shocked. I mean, there's a path for for Spencer, but like she's got to fight the perfect fight, and she would have to like hold the best fighter on earth up against the cage and like be able to control her. I don't know if that's even possible. So yeah, I think so. Nunez wins in terms of bets. I mean, right now there's like one of my bets is, has is COVID. Cor- has, his corner has COVID, so I don't even know if that fight's gonna be on or off. It's a bit of a mess right now. Um, we did like Cody Garbrandt 
on the show around is minus he- 135. I think it's around minus 150-ish. Is, is, where is that the guy be. whose opponent has COVID? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. This is just uh, Cody Garbrandt used to be the bantamweight has he, champion. Has he lost like eight fights in a row? Yeah. I mean, we and Cody, uh, we we faded him in a couple of those spots. I mean, Cody was big up on him losing to Pedro Munoz last time out, which was a good year ago. He's taking time to like regroup, regroup. Because he's not very give old. The brain. Is he? No, he's like twenty eight years old. He's super fast, super talented. The one issue is that sometimes he just says, "Fuck it, I'm going into a brawl and just starts slinging." But he's like. He has so much technique and so much skill. It's like you probably shouldn't be getting into brawls. So the thought is a year off. He's changed camp a year off. It's like regroup and he's going to come back and we're going to be like, this was the guy that like had such an amazing run to the title. I think we see the return of him and his opponent is uh, a Santo, Great guy who's been around forever, but he's 38 years old in that division. It's like you start slowing down. The speed is like the number one thing. Speed kills at 135. And when you're 38 years old and 135 pound man, you're you're definitely slower than you were a few years before. Well, that's on Saturday. Your UFC 250 show is out right now. There's a DraftKings millionaire maker for it. So mm-hmm. people might want to go play that for me. Oh, Gerald Martin. If Gerald sorry, if Heinish is out, just Mearshart is lock. Lock like it. that guy last week, Dominguez or whatever. Yeah, like Rodriguez. Rodriguez. It'll be the exact same thing. It's lock. I use it. He'll be seventy gonna... eight hundred. It's Lock City. Like you just every then, line, then figure out the every rest. lineup comes with Gerald Mishart, and you go on your way. But that's only if Heinish is in. Okay, um, and and if he's taking on uh, Anthony Ivy. As I said, lots of things still up in the air at the time of this recording. Golf millionaire maker next week. PGA is back. I'll have shows every single day for that. And if people want to check out FantasyNational.com, the stats and tool site for golf, it's free right now. So FantasyNational.com, go check it out. Get yourself in a chance to win a million bucks. Playing fantasy golf. I think it's a $20 entry, so go check it out. Paul Shaughnessy, you can follow him on Twitter at Paul Shag. You can follow me at the PME. Remember to smash the like for the episode, uh, subscribe to the audio podcast, and leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Really help out the show. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time. You have experience. Experience.